All right, so today we're going to do a little exploring. Okay, so we've concentrated on squares and square roots, right? This symbol and this symbol, right? Now we're going to get something called cubes and cube roots. So this just kind of explains the first two explorations. Your worksheets are actually on the next two pages, which I'm going to give you time to do here. All right. But you're going to go through on the first one, and you're going to get the volume of a cube. Remember, a cube is a three-dimensional square. Okay. And they want you to find the side lengths. Remember, if the one side's the one, all the sides are the same, right? So for a volume of all these volumes, and kind of and on the page, if you see over here where you're working here, you need to explain how you kind of figured out the side length, okay? Whether you show it in work or whatever, all right? Once you finish those six, you're going to go on to the second exploration, which is finding some equations. Notice now there's a three on for the x instead of a squared, cubed, okay? So for those six, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you about 20 minutes. Most of the groups around the 10-minute mark have been done 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm going to check in at 10 minutes and find out where you're at. And when everyone's ready, we're going to go over this together, and then we'll start going through some of the examples today. We're only going to hit three examples with no homework, and then we'll give you some time to work on Delta Math in class. Okay? So for the next 20 minutes with the people in your group, you're going to work on only explorations one and two. Don't go to the examples yet. Explorations one and two with everybody in your group. All right? We're going to pause and let you work. Who remembers the formula for area of a triangle? Area, I'm sorry, area of a square. Square. That's not a square. Area of a square. Rectangle, square. Two-dimensional object, Annabelle. Right, length times the width. Now, when we, when we add another side and make it three-dimensional, it doesn't become area anymore. It becomes the volume, which is now what? Still length times the width, but what do we have now? Height. So if you think of that formula, what, how were you able to get 8 centimeters? Remember, in a cube, every single side has to be what? The same. Caesar? All right, the side here for this one would be 2, right? Because when you multiply 2 times 2 times 2, you get 8. And that has to be your side. So your side is 2 centimeters. And that's why your volume is always in cubic measurements because, again, that's the area inside this cube. Okay? We're not talking about a square anymore. We're not talking about a two-dimensional object. We're talking about a three-dimensional object. So how would you find the side for 27 feet, cubic feet? Three, right. So it's three feet. Don't forget your measurement because 3 times 3 times 3 gives you 27. Very good. What about 125, Tyler? 5, right. 5 meters because 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. All right, 343, Caesar. Yeah, 7 inches. Now, notice the difference right now with the cubes to the squares. We're talking about bigger numbers, right? Okay. When we dealt with perfect squares, 4 times 4 was 16. Well, when you talk about the cube, 4 times 4 is 64. So you're going to deal with bigger numbers because you're multiplying one extra more time. Does that make sense? So our numbers will get bigger. What about this one? 0.001. It is 0 0.1. How many people got 0 0.1? All right, pretty good. So let me ask you this. How did you figure out some of the, 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 the cube stuff? What, what was some of your method? Because you had to do something a little different. 0 0.1 just didn't come to you. Maybe the other ones because they were nice, perfect, perfect cubes. 
if you hit the math button, remember how we found square root to be second function x squared? If you hit the math button, look at number four. Number four is cubic root. And if you do 0 0.001, And then you really and then 0 0.1 if you want to make it to the third power you can either do the carrot to the three or you can use the math button look at number three that's that's cubed okay so what about one eighth No decimals. It's a half. Half a yard. Because when you do this, one half times itself three times, remember with a fraction, you multiply across. So one times one times one, two times two times two. And that's how you get the one eighth. All right, pretty good. Now, let's go to the equations. Okay. So remember, we just got done doing square uh, square uh, equations, right? So when you had something like um, x squared uh, equals 9, we square rooted both sides, right? To get x equals, remember sometimes it was plus or minus 3 because not only positive 3 worked, but when I took negative 3 times negative 3, wasn't that also 9, right? So now dealing with cubes, what number times itself 3 times gives you negative 27? Negative 3, right? Watch. So negative 3 is the answer. Because when I take negative 3 times negative 3, right? Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. And then 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. What number cubed is, is negative 8? What times what times what gives you negative 8? Negative 2, good, because the same idea. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 gives you negative 8. This one should be pretty easy, right? Negative 1. Because negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 gives you negative 1. Well, what about the other one? If it's x cubed equals 1, what's that one? It's 1. Notice all these are one solution, right? Because it asked you up above how many solutions does it have. When we did the squared, it had two solutions because the negatives work, right? The other number doesn't work here. If I put 3 in for this, is 3 times 3 times 3 negative 27? No, it's only one solution. Same thing over here. 2 times 2 times 2 isn't negative 8. It's positive 8. So in the, in the cubic ones, there's only one solution, not two like there are in the squared equations. All right. So cubic root of eight is two, and the cube, uh, the, the something cubed is twenty-seven. X is three because three times three times three. All right. So let's get to our first example and talk about it. Finding cubic roots. So we got, we just got done dealing with perfect squares, right? A perfect square was when you had a number, the root was always a nice whole number, right? The square root of nine was three. The square root of 25 was 5. All those numbers, those roots, were nice whole numbers, right? They weren't decimals or anything like that, right? Well, cubic roots are the same thing, and they're signified with that 3 in front of the root, like you see right here. So, like, the cubic root of uh, 64 is 4. It's a perfect cube because the root is a nice whole number. Cubic root of 1,000 would be what? 10, 10 times 10 times 10. You're always dealing with numbers that you get multiplied by three times to give you that root number. Okay? So, the cubic root of 8 is 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 gives you 8. Okay? Now, look at, look at B. It has a negative underneath the square root. Right? Or cubic root. When we did square roots, we had problems like this, right? What was that answer? Right, because the square root of 81 was 9, and they took the negative of it, which is negative 9, right? 
What happens when you try to find this? Nope. Try to put that in your calculator. Tell me what you get. Take the square root. Where's the negative button? Right there, right? 81. What do you get? Yeah, you get an error, right? Why do you get an error? Why can't you get an answer? What number times itself gives you negative 81? There is no number, right? 9 times 9 is? What's negative 9 times negative 9? It, there is no number. That's why, now, however, you can get away with this in cubes because when you multiply that extra time, a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. So when you had the cube root of negative 27, negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 gives you negative 27. That's why the root is negative. So cubic roots can have a negative root. It's the only one that can do that. If you try to find it of a square root, you're never going to find it. If your calculator is broken. Now, same thing with fractions, just like we talked about before, right? When I, had, when I gave you the, a square root, uh, 9 sixteenths was a popular one, right? Because we took the square root of 9 and the square root of 16, which was 3 fourths, right? Remember doing that with the, with the fractions and square, square roots? Well, same thing with the cubic root. Take the cubic root of 1 and the cubic root of 64. What's the cubic root of 1? 1. What's the cubic root of 64? What times what times what gives you 64? 4. And that's how you get 1 fourth is the answer. All right? So what I'd like you guys to try right now is 1, 2, and 3. Oh, let's do 1 because one's simple, right? What's the cubic root of 1? Yeah, I think we've kind of hammered that home, right? I want you to find 2 and 3 with your group real quick. Find the cubic root of negative 343 and the cubic root of negative 27 over 1,000. We'll give you guys a couple minutes to figure that out. All right. Have, have a seat. What's the cubic root of negative 343? Negative 7, right? Because negative 7 times negative 7 times negative 7 gives you that. What about the fraction? Caesar. So what's the What's, what's the answer, Tyler? Yeah, negative 3 tenths, right? When you take the cubic root of negative, because remember, there's a negative out here in the cubic root. Well, the, the cubic root of 27 is 3. The cubic root of 1,000 is 10. you got to take the negative of it. How many people got that, negative 3 tenths? Pretty good. How many people got negative 7 for number 2? Oh, good, a lot of hands. All right. Now, I'm going to take you back a little bit. Remember we had a, when we, we squared a square root, like the square root of 4, and we squared it. Who remembers what happens to that? What happens when I square a square root? Yeah, it's just 4, right? It basically it undoes the square root, right? Well, the same idea was when you cube a cube root. If I had the cube root of 8, and I cube that whole thing, again, these, it kind of undoes the, the cube, and it just leaves you 8. All right? So now what we're going to work on is some evaluate expressions like we did with the squares, right? So 2 times the cube root of negative 2, 16. Well, negative 2, 16, the cubic root of that is negative 6. And now you just multiply it to the 2. In B, again, you undo the root, which that's how we were left with 125, and add 21 to it. So I want you to try 4, 5, and 6 now, those examples, and see if you can evaluate that expression. Remember the cubing the cube. Okay, we'll see what you guys come up with for those expressions. You should get an answer. All right, so who can tell me what's the cubic root of 8? Cubic root of 8. Kobe. Well, not the whole answer. What's the cubic root of 8? 2, right? So we break this down to this. So what is 4 times 2? 4 times 2. 8, right? And 18 minus 8? is 10. How many people got 10 for the first one? 
Number four, I should say. Good. All right. What happens when you cube a cubic root? It goes away, right? It undoes it. So you end up with negative 64 plus 43, which is negative 21. Who got negative 21? All right, good. Okay. What's the cubic root of 512? See, it's 8, right? So it breaks down to 5 times 8. And what's 5 times 8? 40. And 40 minus 19? 21. How many people got 21 for 6? All right, very good. All right, the calculator is never wrong. It's how you program it in the calculator. It's user error, not calculator error. Just remember that. Think about it. The calculator is not very smart. It just does exactly what you tell it to do. Remember that. So the calculator has to rely on you, not you relying on the calculator. Remember that. All right, last but not least, we're going to get into solving equations. So when we solve the square root equation, right, like x squared equals 16, how do we get x by itself? What had to happen for us to get x by itself? We had to square root both sides, right? And we got x equals positive or negative 4, right? Because in a square root, the negative worked also, right? Well, in cubes, if I got x cubed equals 216, we take the cubic root of each side. And again, the cubic root of 216 can only be one solution because the negative does not work. The negative makes 216 a negative, not a positive. Because when I plug it in here, it checks. But if I plug negative 6 into here, negative 216 does not equal 216. So it's only one answer every time. All right? Now, we've talked about this a few times this year. Not a lot, but when you're given a fraction, notice here it says multiply each side by negative uh, 4. When I have negative 1 4 to get the n cubed by itself, I got to multiply by the reciprocal. And the reciprocal of negative 1 4 is negative 4 over 1. Remember, we take the fraction and we flip it. Well, negative 4 over 1 is the same thing as negative 4, right? So when I multiply both sides by negative 4 over 1, that cancels out the fraction when you multiply by its reciprocal. That's why it's only n to the third there. And negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. And now I can cubic root both sides to get n equals negative 2. All right? So the last thing I want you guys to do Let's do, so if I had number 7 there, z to the 3rd equals negative 1,000. This is a one-step equation, basically. Well, what do I do to get z by itself? Think of what you did in the square roots. Cubic root, yep, cubic root both sides. So the cubic root of z squared is z because z times z times z gives you z to the 3rd, three z's, right? What's the cubic root of negative 1,000? Negative 10. And that would be your answer for 7. So I want you to try 8 and 9 real quick. 9 is a little bit like the example up above that we just talked about with one extra step. So let's see if you guys can do with that. Work together. So, number 8. I've got to get rid of the 3 first. How am I going to do that? I'll give you a hint. It ain't subtracting. Divide by 3 first. When I do that, I'm left with b to the third equals... Now, you can solve this with mental math, right? 3 goes into 10 how many times? Right? 3 times 3 is 9. You get 1 left over, so that means 3 goes into 12. Nothing's left over, right? And then 3 goes into 9. Look at that. Don't need no calculator. Now, to solve for B, what has to happen? Cubic root both sides. So the cube root of B cubed is B. The cubic root of 343. 7. How many people got 7? Awesome. That's a lot of hands. All right. Number nine has a few steps to it. 
Remember, when we had extra stuff, we got to get rid of that first. We have to get rid of the 8. I get rid of the 8 by doing what? Subtracting it, doing the opposite. When I subtract 8 both sides, I get 25 on the left and negative 1 fifth m to the, to the third on the right. I got to get rid of the negative 1 fifth. Right, multiply by negative 5 over 1, or negative 5, right? So that cancels out the fraction, leaving me just m to the third on the right. And what's negative 5 times 25? Only one person know? Jacob? Negative 125. And now our last step to get m by itself, what has to happen? We cubic root both sides. And m equals, what's the cubic root of negative 125? Negative 125. See, negative 5. Because 5 times 5 times 5 is 125, so negative 1 is negative 5. How many people got that one? That was a tougher one. There were some steps to that. We have one? All right, one person got it. Two people got it. Three? Okay. All right. So... Listen, we're going to freeze it right here. Tomorrow, we're going to do the self-assessment. But for today, since there is no homework and we're done with the examples, work on some delta math. And now there's two sections in there dealing with cubes and cubic roots. So even tonight, take a little bit of time and knock out those two sections tonight. Don't, don't do your delta math over the weekend, all right?